Here's an idea. A selfie isn't exactly a photo, and maybe that's why so many people hate them. All right, everybody, brace your faces because I'm about to defend selfies. Besides being a major part of the modern visual language, and language language, because it was named the word of the year by the OED in 2013, I also think the collected Vigentillion selfies that have been taken are an important and meaningful snapshot of the present. But I realize that I am not in the majority here. There is plenty of revulsion for the photo form. I will say that some of it is sort of fair, but you can't let a few bad apple mugs ruin an entire genre of photography. Or Maybe you can, I don't know. I guess that's up to you. Lots of the ire, though, is not for the transgressive or inappropriate selfie, but just for the selfie itself. Chris O'Shea at the Daily Lounge says, you can argue that people hate political rants more than the selfie, but we disagree. The selfie is the most annoying habit. My favorite person in the world, Sherry Turkle, wrote that technology doesn't just do things for us, it does things to us. It changes not just what we do, but who we are. The selfie makes us accustomed to putting ourselves and those around us on pause in order to document our lives. Anyway, by now, I'm sure that you get the picture. But before we get into the thick of talking about why I don't think selfies are all that bad, let's first talk for a second about photography and then social media and then the perfect expression of their hybridization. So I'm of the solidly 20th century opinion that photography is a fine art. It's a big debate and in some senses it's still going on. Not the least of the reasons why is that nearly everyone can be a photographer who can take high quality, read definition, photos. As a result, lots of people see photography as having devolved into a kind of skillless visual art Bleh. I have a camera, I snap a thing, it's where I am, I put it on the internet, what's for lunch? Taking a bad photo is very easy, but by way of a very unfair comparison, I think writing a bad song is still really hard. Doubly so for painting, sculpture, programming, video games, you get the idea. Anybody can, and depending upon where you live, most people probably do just photo. Which to me is the beauty of the form, but you probably already knew that. So, but that is where the gray area sits. At the sonic near the intersection of everyone, easy, and artistic medium streets. We're gonna be talking mostly about Instagram, which as far as most people are concerned is where the selfies live, but I think that this also works for most of photography, and definitely, definitely. mobile photography. So if photography is an artistic medium, but snapshots of your lunch, the Brooklyn sunset, your dog, and selfies are not, then what are they? They are trying to capture a meaning, maybe depict a thought or location or moment. They're trying to convey something to an audience. They're kind of like status updates. Status updates, like what you see on Twitter and Facebook, are these little quanta of text, usually descriptive and creative, though, unless you're Teju Cole, rarely seen as artworks. Status updates are more like a speech act. Now, you might normally think, when you hear the words speech act, of someone using their vocal cords to make word sounds that travel through the air bits. But a speech act and the act of actually speaking can be two different things. Skeptical eyebrows and a cool guy head nod are two very effective speech acts with clear meaning, but no actual speaking. What all these things share is the performance of some communication, the utterance, the things referenced by the utterance, and the intention of the utterance, what you want to happen inside the person who is receiving it. Status updates, and not just the text, but the whole set of actions and context comprising them them are more like speech acts, I think, than they are like capital R writing. In the same way, a lot of Instagram, and most meaningfully, the selfie, not just the photo, but again, the whole kit and photo caboodle, you know, where you do the thing with your arm and like, you know, through the is more like a speech act than it is like photography. Sometimes the social media photo is art for art's sake, but in the context of sharing and liking and comments, that's hard to do. Mostly, Instagram is about letting people know where you are or were, showing people what you're doing or looking at, showing them parts of your life, like your face, which is part of your life. FYI. In my mind, a selfie is not necessarily a photo, but a hyper-effective block of text communicated in photographic form. It describes what you look like, where you might be, how you're feeling, or maybe who you're with. A selfie, as most status updates are, is like talking about yourself. James Franco, yes, that James Franco, wrote, of course, the self-portrait is an easy target for charges of self-involvement, but in a visual culture, it quickly and easily shows, not tells, how you're feeling, where you are, what you're doing. Meaning, these pictures now have more than one intent, depiction 
and explanation. Insofar as the medium is the message, these messages are getting a little muddled. Is it a visual and aesthetic experience? Is it a description of the person who took it? Or is it both? The hate for selfies, or at least part of it, I think, comes from this confusing situation. It's not classically a photograph or simply a status update. And while it's weird, that might be part of its beauty. New York Times tech reporter Jenna Wortham wrote that selfies strongly suggest the world we observe through social media is more interesting when people insert themselves into it. Now, if you hate selfies because of the parts of the world into which people choose to insert themselves, that is another thing entirely. To which I would say, don't hate the selfie, hate the selfie-er, self-selfer, selfie, selfie taker. What do you guys think? Why do people hate selfies? And don't just say narcissism. We're all a little narcissistic. You admit it. Let us know in the comments and, uh, actually, hold on, just pause for a second here. What are we doing? In my mind, there is only one true anime. Rugrats. Let's see what you guys had to say about Avatar being anime. Sedona Parnum and Olga Abiani point out um, what I think was the most interesting thing that I learned from this episode, which is that for a lot of people, the designation anime goes beyond genre and actually implies a kind of value judgment, that calling something anime means that it is either better or in, it seems, fewer cases, worse. And um, Alike Lamba points out that this might be um, a particularly Western attitude or really American attitude, which is another thing I didn't know, which is really interesting. Also, all three of you guys have great names. To Chad, yes, I know, um, bending is not magic. My justification was that for people not familiar with Avatar, that was the quickest way for them to understand what it is. But yes, yeah, I, yeah, I hurt inside for having called bending magic. Please accept my apology. Lost in Numbers makes a really interesting comparison between the designation anime being like the designation Hollywood, that it is both um, a kind of quality and a geographical designation, which I'd never heard before. And yeah, I wonder, I wonder how many other people feel this way about anime. Nerdy Bandit wrote a really amazing comment about the circular influence of anime and Western animation. So we'll just scroll through this right here, but it's totally worth a read. So we'll put a link to it in the description, um, along with probably all the other comments from now on, because you can do that on YouTube now. Now, which is sweet. JMDJ530 points out that Boondocks is anime because it is animated by Japanese and Korean animation studios, but guess what? So is Avatar. They even share one. It's also animated by MOI Animations. Um, I think, and if, and if the argument is then that the founder of the idea is American, then, you know, um, as Kurafun points out on Twitter, the studio that made Tech on Kinkrete has an American head, so does that then threaten its anime-ness? This is a can of worms isn't it? Can of worms. No. You stop. Well... J.D. Kinsley says that we maybe need a new word to describe some of the different breadths of animation that exist throughout the world. And this makes me wonder whatever happened to Japanimation as a thing, which I think that's what I said when I was in middle school. Is that like not cool anymore. It's fine if it is. I just need to know. And as a parting thought, consider the following. I got more mean emails and messages about last week's episode about anime than I did about the trolling episode, which is interesting, I think. Anyway, this week's episode is brought to you by the hard work of these mecha pilots. We have an IRC, a Facebook, and a subreddit. Links in the description. The tweet of the week comes from Soulful Chris, who points us towards an interview with anime writer Dai Sado, who says that the boondocks are in fact anime, and that Japan has no exclusive right to making anime. Hmm. And for our first brand new record on the wall, we will be replacing Nina Hagen with Nina Hagen. Goodbye to Nina Hagen and hello to Nina Hagen. Band.